All right, so good news. Delvers have returned. Herbalists can handle the occasional low-level thing, so I go fairly easy on them, especially since they tend to wander in solo. The bad news, though, is that nobody wants to try the hedge maze. It's grown enough that they can't directly see Tiny, but they can see the trees and webbing around his nest. He's even been working on putting a web roof over the whole maze. Good thinking, Tiny. Don't need cheaters in my maze. Also, good news. Queen was able to identify what goes into a healing potion. Also bad news, I need actual equipment to let her do her work. I've upgraded the secret lab a few times, and I'm pretty sure it's allowed to have equipment now, but I'm having trouble getting it. I haven't been able to afford carpenter ants yet, but I might need to get on that. I've been trying to make at least some equipment for the lab, and it hasn't outright failed at least. If I had fire ants, it might be simpler, but I don't. I have lightning ants. I've been sending crows out on expeditions to try to get me some iron wire, but nobody has had any success yet. With some iron wire, I could have the lightning major zap it to make a heating element, and use the empty potion bottle for the various processing that it looks like Queen will have to do. The kids have come back too. They're the closest anyone has come to checking out the maze. They looked inside from the entrance, but I think Lucas spotted one of the rat thieves, and the kids decided against looking inside. I'm pretty sure they've gained a level now too. Low level things aren't slowing them down hardly at all anymore. They even handled a regular die rat on their own. The gate opens, and I expect it'll be the kids again, but it's Elf Guy. Hey Elf Guy, long time no see. He glares at Poe as every single bird makes noise at him, and if I could, I'd give him a shit eating grin. Dungeon clearly recognizes me, Avian's making a racket, I'm not alerting other denizens, just making noise at me. No unusual staring. There's that mention of staring again. It must have been from when I moved the core and had everything on high alert. That's the only time I've done much different. Still no obvious rooms. I see our chemical creatures, though, so it must have a secret lab somewhere. He looks around before looking up to the belfry. Perhaps in the belfry tower. Still no chest or anything up there. Acknowledged. Investigating. Oh. Elf guy is actually taking things seriously now. Doesn't mean I have to, though I still have my dignity as a dungeon. I toss some various moderate encounters at him as he explores the house. He managed to trip one of the rotten floorboards in the basement and decides he doesn't need to get a closer look. Yeah, that level 6 lightning venom swarm is quite a thing. Pretty sure he could take it, but he's all business right now. No pleasure. He obliterates the rat swarm in the attic, and I can visibly see him pause to ensure he gets his boss experience before he opens the chest. I'm not even sure he notices what he actually gets from the chest. He just stuffs it in a bag that should not be able to hold all of that. On roof, Ravenstein is observing me, but not making any moves. Bats appear specialised for fruit bats, which helps explain why all the herbless nodes. He watches as a trio of crows land on the roof, one carrying a bit of iron wire. Oh, hey, good job, guys. Recover a bit, then head out to see if you can find anything else interesting. Confirmed dungeon ascending expeditions. Must have a secret war room, too. Investigating Belfry. Psst, hey, Coda, make sure everyone's awake. I don't think Elf Guy has violence on his mind, but still be ready to bolt if it comes to it. I don't bother sending any encounters to Elf Guy while he's on the roof. Partially because my burbs aren't really focused on combat, and partially because I kind of see the whole area as unfinished. Maybe I'll make the Belfry into a garden or something later. It'll make sense to have it close to the ones that bring me seeds. He cautiously peers up the stairs and goes, but doesn't seem phased by what I would consider a pretty big anticlimax. Confirm Belfry is specialised towards fruit bats. I can see seeds on the floor, likely have been sent on expeditions at night. Sweeping for hidden rooms. Yeah, I think he's going to be there a while. I make sure my bats will bolt if he gets twitchy. I let him take a 20 searching for something that's not there. I look in to see how Queen's doing with the alchemy, and with a new iron wire. Right, I need to get that thing moved and shaped. Hey, who's my closest spider? Ah, there you are. Go get that bit of wire and leave it by one of the mole slash snake holes. My snakes don't like being on the roof, and I don't want to just drop the wire off and lose it. Fluffles, take that wire with you into the tunnels and coil it up as much as you can. I don't think my ants can bend that thing easily. Queen, make sure there's a big enough tunnel for the ants to move it to the lab, and get ready to start rotating whatever electric ants for as you need them. I want some healing ants, dang it. By the time the core is in the lab, it looks like Elf Die is about done with the Belfry. He doesn't look very happy. Negative and secret room in Belfry. I'll be sure he'll be hiding something up here. And that's why I'm not, bucko.
The smart people look for areas being carefully ignored to wonder if that's important. And smart dungeons put their core in a place people walk past all the time. Who's going to look under every brick in a road? Oh hey, he's looking at the maze. Confirm odd bramble patch. Looks like spider sand is in there, as well as several chests. They seem far lower level than they should be though, especially with this dungeon. Acknowledged. Investigating. Finally, someone to check out the maze. He won't be able to get the good stuff if he just picks a wall to follow either. He carefully approaches the entrance and peers around before talking to his team back at the guild. At least I'm pretty sure they're at the guild. I found a few guild houses from my expeditions, but I still don't have specific names for them. The adventurer delvers from the other day went to two different guild houses, so I can only assume one is from a guild for delvers and one a guild for, I don't know, dungeon inspection? At least I know which church is Freddy's and which magic shop is Rhonda's. I've been able to label things in the map too, so that's good. But back to Elf Guy. Confirm spider sign in Bramble. It's high enough level, even I'll need to be careful. Also looks like lower level dire rats in the area, but I can't pinpoint. Rat Sion probably taught them a few tricks, he said with a grumble as he rubs his hand. Timo does great work. Heading in. Yes. I just wish I could give a quest involving the maze. That'd be cool. Maybe one of the Romans would allow that. I'll need to check that later. For now, I watch Elf Guy as he stalks the maze. He can definitely tell where the chests and nodes are, but looks like he doesn't know the floor plan of the maze, which is good. One of my wrath thieves darts from the hedge, but Elf Guy has damn good reflexes. He doesn't get very close before a knife finishes it with a single stab. Dire rats are rat thieves, don't appear to be interested in combat. Spider Sign appears to be slowly tracking me, but not in any particular hurry. Come into my maze, said the spider to the elf guy. Tiny was the best sign to put in here, since he can actually help change the maze layout a bit. If he webs an opening and tears down a different web, the whole maze basically shifts. And that's what Tiny is doing. I don't think he forgave elf guy like I have. While Tiny slowly weaves his trap, elf guy explores the maze, gathering chests and nose along the way. None of the thieves even get close to taking any of his stuff, and I feel like elf guy is starting to understand the maze a bit better. Bramble is a different style of encounter than previously observed, it appears to be more of a race than a simple battle. Collect as much stuff as you can before the spider sign gets you, and before the thieves pick you clean. As Tiny closes the drawstring and traps the elf guy, he seems to notice. Wait, something's changed. He frowns as he looks around before realising what's happening. I've lost this race, extracting. That's what you think, elf guy. Tiny's webs aren't going to be phased by your daggers, so no going up and over. Good luck trying to go for the hedges too. I don't know exactly how much damage they do, but I don't think you have that many HP, my friend. Tiny finally rounds a bend in the maze. The two able to lay eyes directly on the other now. Elf Guy dons his serious face and draws his daggers as Tiny simply slowly approaches. I can see his spinnerets slowly working on the web too. Yeah, he definitely still holds a grudge from when Elf Guy killed him. Sorry, big guy. You look too big for me to play around with now. Shadow Blade! As Elf Guy melts into shadow, Tiny curls in a bit on himself, clearly remembering the attack that ended him last time. Several long gashes appear in his carapace, though not over anything particularly vital. As the attack comes to an end though, Tiny tosses his web. Fuck! It's all Elf Guy gets out, but the web envelops him. Tiny! You never told me you had a brain! I guess you really did remember the attack that ended you, and remembered when and where Elf Guy is when he finishes it. Who's a good spider? You are. Yes, you are. As Tiny approaches Elf Guy, I remind the big lug about how the maze works. He deflates a little, but he did still win. Elf Guy looks terrified, though. Don't worry, my dude. Good effort with the first run of the maze, though. Tiny moves one of his massive Peter Pops over the Delver, and Elf Guy closes his eyes, expecting a bite to finish him off. Instead, Tiny takes what I'm pretty sure is a bag of holding. He quickly weaves a larger bag, webbing Elf Guy up more in the process, and enters the magical bag into the more mundane one. He drops the bag on the floor, and one of my rat thieves sits by to pick it up, and I can see the indignation in the Elf Guy's eyes. With that, Tiny hauls him and his loop up and takes him outside the maze, depositing him unceremoniously just outside the entrance. Elf Guy gets to stew for a few minutes before Fluffles can come by and levitate him outside the gates. Ha! I only wish I could see the reactions from everyone. Hey, Burbs, expedition.